is marvelous, sings her lullaby. Joy, oh joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, who shall
right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas. And as we gather together, I know there's still some people wandering in. We're going to sing our gathering song. Um, please just listen along. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service here at Concha Hopkins United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you've come and joined us here this evening. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas as we uh, continue to worship. Um, I would invite you now to rise and, uh, and sing along with us. The words are on the screen as we sing some traditional Christmas hymns together to begin our worship here this evening.
Tonight we celebrate the birth of Jesus. As we waited for this day, we lit four candles. The first candle that we lit was a candle of hope. The second candle that we lit was the candle of love. The, th the third candle we lit was a candle of joy. The fourth candle we lit was a candle of peace. Tonight, we will light the center white candle, the trice candle. When we look at the center candle, we remember that Jesus is the light of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it reads, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in the darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. God sent Jesus to give hope, love, joy, and peace to all his people. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it reads, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of Cain Herod. About that time, some wise men from the Easter land arrived in Jerusalem, asking, where is a newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we came to worship him. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it reads, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed to worship him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Please join me in prayer. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus for all of our people. Help us remember and rejoice again because Jesus was born. Help us live every day remembering your love and care and showing that love and care to others. Amen. Amen. To receive our offering.
We had a scripture reading change, so I just want to update you in your um, bulletin this evening. It does say the book of Matthew, but we'll be reading from the book of John tonight. So it's John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 in your pew Bible. That's page 1645. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I'd like to invite all the younger members of our fellowship to come forward and to spend a little bit of time with me. And make yourselves comfortable, except that chair will be mine. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Thank you so much for coming and being a part of us here today. Here comes Owen. <laughs> yes. Today actually felt like kind of a normal day today with me. Because, well, it went. Well, felt like a normal day? Yeah. 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 Well, Christmas Eve is kind of a normal day, but uh, tomorrow, of course, you get up early, right? And what do you do? Open presents. Open presents, that's right. Huh? I don't get up early. You don't get up early, okay. <laughs> One time I had to wake me up at 11 because I wouldn't get up. You were in no hurry to get your presents, huh? Nope. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Well, I wanted to share a story with you um, and with everyone here today. This is kind of the sermon and the children's message all in one. Um, I'll tell you, it was something that was put upon my heart in the last couple of weeks um, when I heard about the shooting that took place in Jersey City and someone was targeting um, Jewish people in particular. And most of you know what that was, uh, are familiar with what's been going on. And the increase in um, the hate speech that's been going on in our country and our culture and the divides that are taking place. And, and so uh, as I was meditating on that and preparing and thinking, I came across a story called The Christmas Menorahs, How a Town Fought Hate. And I thought this would be a great story for us to share. This is a true story. Uh, it's based on something that actually took place in Billings, Montana in 1993. And so I thought um, I'd share this with you. 
So the events are based on real events that happened to Isaac Schnitzner and Teresa Hanley and their families. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, okay. I always like a good story myself. It was a cold December night in Billings, Montana. Christmas lights twinkled on many houses, and from a few homes, Hanukkah menorahs shone into the darkness. It was the third night of Hanukkah. At Isaac Schnitzer's house, there was a menorah in almost every window. Isaac was in the den working on his math homework. Any of you have math homework that you work on? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Suddenly there was a loud crash. Isaac jumped up. Mrs. Davis, the babysitter, ran in from the kitchen. What happened? She called. Are you okay? I'm all right, Isaac answered. I think the noise came from my bedroom. You can see him doing his homework, his math work there. Hopefully it's not algebra. I always had trouble with algebra. How about you guys? Yeah. Algebra's hard, yeah. Isaac and Mrs. Davis headed down the hall. When they opened the door to Isaac's room, they felt a rush of icy air. Isaac flipped on the light, and they saw what had happened. The big front window was shattered. The electric menorah that had been on the windowsill was lying on the carpet, still glowing. Pieces of glass covered the floor, and on Isaac's bed was a big rock. My goodness, Mrs. Davis exclaimed. Someone threw a rock through your window. Isaac rushed to the window to look outside. The street was quiet. Whoever had thrown the rock was gone. Who did it, Isaac asked. Why would someone do this? I don't know, said Mrs. Davis, shivering. She quickly pulled down the blinds and unplugged the menorah. Isaac, I think we should call your parents. Let's go to the kitchen and find the phone. Number they left for us. You can see the shattered window here. The menorah lying on the ground. Isaac nodded. It was very cold in his room, and suddenly he didn't want to be there. What if he'd been in the bed when that rock came flying through? A little while later, Isaac's parents came home. When they saw the window, they just stared for a moment. Then they turned to Isaac and folded him into their arms. Are you okay? His dad asked. I'm all right, Isaac told them. But he was glad his mom and dad were home. It must have been very scary, honey, Isaac's mom said to her son softly. She turned to Isaac's dad. I knew this would happen, she said. These terrible people keep threatening and threatening. Threatening what, Isaac asked. Who's threatening us? Isaac will talk about this in a little while, I promise, his dad told him. Now your mother and I need to figure out what to do. We should call the police right away, Isaac's mom insisted. Chief Inman will come. Wow, Chief Inman's coming? Remember when he came to my school? He's nice, Isaac said. Yes, he is, his mom agreed, and I know that he'll help us. In the meantime, we should leave everything just the way it is. You mean so he can look for clues, Isaac asked. Exactly, she told him. You can see this is Isaac, and his parents are holding him. Isaac was the first to see Chief Inman as he came up the walk, and he ran to greet him at the door. His parents followed close behind. Thank you for coming so quickly, said Isaac's mom. The police chief was wearing his uniform. Isaac couldn't help staring at the gun in the holster on his belt. Isaac, your mom and Mrs. Davis and I need to talk Chief Inman, to Chief Inman alone for a while, his dad told him. Oh, Dad, Isaac said. Can't I stay? Not this time, his dad answered. But we'll call you before Chief Inman leaves. Yes, said the chief. I need to tell you, and you need to tell me exactly what you heard and saw. You can see his house. Looks like they had a bit of snow there, huh? Isaac reluctantly went to the den and tried to do the rest of his math problems, but he just couldn't. Finally, he closed the book, crept down the hall, and listened outside the living room. Have you ever done that? No? Didn't listen in on your mom and dad? I used to do that. He heard his mom saying, we're not taking down the Hanukkah decorations. Being Jewish is who we are. We're not going to hide it. You shouldn't have to, Chief Inman said. And yet, it might be safer. The police will try to do their best to protect you. But with the holidays here, Jewish families seem to be these haters' special targets, especially families with menorahs in their windows. 
I guess that's their idea of getting the holiday spirit, Isaac Dads muttered angrily, throwing rocks through Jewish kids' bedrooms' windows is a twisted way of celebrating, Chief Einman said, shaking his head. When Isaac heard that, he couldn't help rushing into the living room. Someone threw a rock in my window because I'm Jewish, he asked. I think that is why someone threw the rock, Chief Einman answered. There's a small group of people in Billings who have been causing a lot of trouble. First, they sent out leaflets saying hateful things about Jews and some other groups who live here. Then they spray painted threats and insults on a Native American home and tried to frighten African Americans in their church. Last week, they damaged the synagogue, and now they're throwing rocks at menorahs. But I can tell you this, we're going to do everything we can to stop them. You can see Chief Inman talking to Isaac. Are you going to shoot them? No, son. <laughs> I don't like to use my gun. Almost never do, as a matter of fact. I'm the kind of policeman who tries to help people without using guns and bullets. Isaac was surprised. All the policemen she saw on TV seemed to shoot their guns a lot. Will you put them in jail? If I can catch them, we will. But I think there's another way we can do something about this, Chief Inman answered, and that's if the whole town takes a stand. I'm going to do what I can to make that happen. Now tell me, what do you remember about the rock throwing? After Chief Inman and Miss Davis had left, Isaac and his parents sat at the kitchen table drinking hot chocolate and talking. Inman said that the people who threw the rock probably don't even know us, Isaac exclaimed. So why would they do it? Just because we're Jewish, his dad answered. They don't know anything about the kind of people that we are. They still, they choose to hate us. It's the same with the other families in town they're trying to frighten. They don't know them either but they don't like the color of their religion, their skin, or the color, um, they don't like the, their color or their religion or some of their beliefs. But why, Isaac asked. I wish I know, his dad, dad said. Haters and bullies have been around for as long as anyone can remember. Isaac was quiet for a few moments, and then he burst out. Let's put our menorahs away. Then maybe we won't bother us again. They won't bother us again. His dad put his arms around him. I know how you feel, he said. It's frightening. But celebrating Hanukkah is part of being Jewish. It's what we believe in. We are not about to let some bullies keep us from celebrating our holiday. Dad's right, Isaac's mom said. We come from a family of pioneers. We came to Montana so that we could do things our own way. In a sense, I guess we're pioneers too. But I don't want to be a pioneer, Isaac protested. I want to be like everybody else. Sticking up for what one's belief is is never easy, his dad said, but we're not alone. A lot of people in this town, all kinds of people, are really angry at what these haters have been doing, and we're going to fight back. For one thing, Mom's decided to get in touch with the local TV stations. She wants to be interviewed so she can tell everyone in Billings what's happened to us and ask people to help. Mom's going on TV? Really? Isaac asked excitedly. You know, Mom, Dad said, when something happens and she thinks it's wrong, she speaks her mind. Isaac rolled his eyes. Yeah, that's Mom, all right. Do you have moms like that? No. no. The next day, a television reporter and cameraman came to the Schnitzel's home, and as the camera rolled, Isaac's mom explained what had happened that night before and spoke about the acts of hate toward other people in Billings. Then she showed the reporter and the cameraman Isaac's bedroom. Earlier, police detectives had come and took pictures and looked for clues, so nothing had been moved. That evening, Isaac was excited to see his room on the news, but he felt kind of funny, too. He had slept in his parents' room the night before, but tonight he would be back in his own room again. Would it be safe? The Hanukkah decorations were still up in all the other windows but he hadn't put his memora back in. And he wasn't sure he wanted to. If someone threw another rock, he talked about this with his parents as they finished cleaning up his room. The broken window had been repaired and Isaac's bed had been moved away from the window. We're going to do everything we can to protect you, Isaac, his mom reassured him. Chief Inman has arranged for the police to keep a careful eye on the house and our neighbors have promised they're going to do the same. Whether or not you put your menorah back in your window is your choice, his dad said. 
but take some time to think about it. Isaac nodded. He still didn't know what to do. And you see the cameraman interviewing his mom. Many people in Billings saw Miss Schnitzel on TV and had read about what had happened in town newspaper. Then a special meeting was called by Chief Inman and a woman named Margaret McDonald. She was a friend of the Snitchers and had worked with many of the churches in Billings on special projects. The day of the meeting was cold and blustery, but a big crowd had filled the hall. Isaac and his parents were there too. The police were doing everything they could to catch these people. Chief Inman told the crowd, but it's important that we take a stand as a community. We have to show that we act against hate. Every person in Billings has to act against hate for all of us. I have an idea, said Mrs. McDonald. I've been thinking about a story my parents told me when I was a child. It's about what happened in Denmark during World War II, and it was so inspiring that I've never forgotten it. This is what I remember. During World War II, many countries in Europe were fighting the Nazis who believed that Jews and some other people should be imprisoned or killed because they were different. The Nazis ordered the Jews to sew stars on their clothing so they could be easily identified. But Denmark had a courageous king named Christian. King Christian believed that the lives of all Danish people were precious. According to legend, after the Nazis conquered Denmark, King Christian said that if the Jews had to wear stars, then he would wear one too. The next morning, when King Christian rode on horseback out of the palace, he was wearing a Jewish star. Soon, many of the Danes were wearing them, too. The Danes knew that the enemy had threatened to punish them if they tried to help their Jewish neighbors. But that didn't stop these brave people, because they stood together against the Nazis. Many Jews were saved. You can see King Edmund on his horse riding out of the palace. The Schnitzers have been urged to take down their manures so they won't be a target. But that's not the answer, continued Miss McDonald. What if the rest of us were told to take down our Christmas trees and lights because people threw rocks at us for being Christian? I say, let's take a stand like the Danish people did. Let's all put up manures. Great idea, said Reverend Torney, who was the minister at the First Congregational Church. I'll speak to the other religious leaders who couldn't come to the meeting today, and then we'll talk to our congregations. But where can we get menorahs, someone asked. I think I have a solution, Reverend Torney answered. Our Sunday school just had a lesson about Hanukkah, and they handed out pictures of menorahs to all the children. We'll make copies of the picture, and the churches can help distribute them throughout the town. Let's do it, called out Becky Thomas, a neighbor of the Schnitzers. Lots of others in the crowd shouted their agreement. Reverend Torney smiled, and the plan just might work. The day after the meeting, Isaac's class talked about what had happened to Isaac and his family. Isaac's teacher, Mrs. Pearson, had asked Isaac to bring in his menorah and explain why his family celebrated Hanukkah. His friend, Teresa Hanley, had never seen a menorah. What are the candles for, she asked. So Isaac told the story of Hanukkah. Long ago, in the second century BC, Israel was ruled by King Antichus of Syria. He decreed that Jews could no longer practice their religious traditions. He greatly angered them, and so a small group of freedom fighters called the Maccabees fought a three-year war against the Syrians. Though they were greatly outnumbered, the Maccabees fought heroically and were finally victorious. After the war, according to legend, the Maccabees went to reclaim the temple in Jerusalem and prepare it for worship. When they tried to light the sacred lamp at the temple's altar, they found only one small jar of oil, just enough to provide light for a single night. But miraculously, the oil kept the lamp burning for eight nights. That's why the menorah has nine candles. There's one for each night, with an extra candle to light the others. Every year, Jews celebrate Hanukkah by lighting menorahs and remembering the victory of the Maccabees against religious intolerance. You can see the light held up. That's a wonderful story, said Miss Pearson. Some bullies threw a rock in the window where I had my menorah, Isaac blurted out, just because I'm Jewish. Were you scared? 
Jonathan wanted to know. Well, maybe a little, Isaac admitted. That was a hard thing to have happen to you and your family, Miss Pearson said. I read about it in the Billings Gazette. And so did the other teachers. We're all very sorry and angry. Like Isaac said, Hanukkah celebrates the fight for religious freedom. The truth is, people have to fight this battle over and over again. We're doing it now in Billings. Has anyone else in the class ever picked on, been picked on for being different? Or do you know someone else to whom this happened? I know someone, Teresa volunteered. Last year, there was a new boy in my class. His name was Caleb. He's Cheyenne. He comes from the reservation. Some of the kids didn't know that. They weren't very nice to him. So I tried to be his friend. I talked to him and we played games together. Then the other kids started to play with him too. Good for you, Mrs. Pearson said. How did it feel when the other kids started following your example? It made me feel happy, Teresa said. My sister has to use a wheelchair, Jeff said, and some kids at school stare at her and tease her because she's different. They shouldn't do that, it hurts her feelings, and sometimes it makes her cry. Yes, that's very cruel, Mrs. Pearson said. What do you think you would do if someone were bullying you? Maybe I would just go to another school, Jasmine answered. You might want to, said Miss Pearson, but wouldn't that be a little like running away? It's just the opposite of standing up and saying to a bully, I won't let you push me around. Yeah, if you run away from the bullies, they'll know you're scared and they'll push you around even more, said Matthew. My dad taught me that. He's absolutely right, Mrs. Pearson agreed. That's why the town is taking a stand, because when people stand up to bullies, especially when they stand up together, lots of time the bullies back down. And something else happens too. The people who are being picked on know that they aren't alone. They know other people care. So some of us are going to be putting up menorahs in our windows, even though we're not Jewish. We want to show our support for Isaac's family and the other families that are being harassed in Billings. Teresa liked the idea. She'd been trying to imagine how she would feel if someone threw a rock into her window because she had a Christmas tree. It wasn't fair that Isaac had to have this happen to him. She knew she had to do something to help him. When Teresa came home from school that day, she told her mom what the class had talked about, and she wanted to have a menorah in our windows, Mom. For Isaac, Teresa said, I've been thinking the same thing, her mom said, but it's a decision we should make as a family. We've got to wait until everyone comes home. Then we'll all talk about this together. It seemed like forever before Teresa's three sisters, her brother, and her father were home. Finally, they ate supper, and the family talked about Teresa's idea. I don't know much about Hanukkah, Michael said. Me either, says Julian. You can see them all eating their dinner. Teresa told the family how Isaac had explained the holiday. The other children wanted to hear more, so they went to the encyclopedia and looked up a section about Hanukkah. Each child read a part aloud. This holiday is pretty neat, Michael said. I like the part about the Maccabees. In the encyclopedia was a picture of a menorah, just as Teresa had described it. Let's draw our own menorah, she said, and put it in the window. But what if people think we're Jewish, Elizabeth asked. So what if they do, Michael said. We could get rock through through our window. That's what said Elizabeth nervously, or maybe something worse. We would be taking a risk, Mr. Hanley said, but some risks are worth it. People shouldn't be treated this way. What if this happened to us? Wouldn't we want people to help? Count me in, Michael said. I'll do it, said Elizabeth. Julian and Kathleen, uh, Kathleen agreed too. Think of it this way, said Mrs. Hanley. Well, we never did like our windy room. We're living room windows much anyway. The family laughed. They knew that this would have to do. Mom, Isaac called out as he walked to the door after gymnastics. My friend Greg told me that the Catholic high school put up a big sign in their window that said, let's try to get along. And someone threw a brick at it and smashed the window into a zillion pieces. Yes, I know, his mom answered. I was just at the meeting about it. As usual, those cowards did their dirty work at night in the dark, so they couldn't be seen. Thank goodness the school was empty and no one was hurt. Is the school mad at us, Isaac asked. Honey, why would the school be mad at us? If they're mad at anyone, they would be mad at the person who threw the brick, his mother said. But they're sort of doing this for us, and now they got their window smashed. Isaac's mom thought about it before she answered. 
Yes, Isaac, they're doing it for us. And for other families that are, the haters are trying to scare. But they're doing it for themselves, too. They're trying to make Billings a better place to live for everyone. Then Isaac's mom had an idea. Don't take your coat off. We're going to go for a drive. Where, Isaac asked, surprised. It was almost time for dinner. You'll see. It was getting dark as Isaac and his mother began to drive slowly through the neighborhood. Look, Mom, Isaac cried, look at all the menorahs in house after house in the frosty windows. Isaac could see pictures of menorahs. There wasn't a single street without a Hanukkah symbol, like our house, Isaac said. That's right, his mother agreed. Did any was house rocks turn through their windows? Yes, they did, his mom answered. But you know what? Isaac shook his head. People have become even more determined. The Billings Gazette printed a full page picture of a menorah and asked people to display it in the door, on the door and windows of their homes. And they did, Isaac. People put up thousands of menorahs. Isaac was silent for a bit, thinking. And then he said slowly, Mom, remember last year when I told you I wanted to bring some of my Hanukkah presents to school to show the other guys? Uh-huh. Well, now don't be mad, but I didn't tell them they were Hanukkah presents. I felt funny, Mom. Nobody else gets Hanukkah presents. Everyone else gets presents for Christmas. And I didn't want to be different. I just wanted to be like the rest of the class. So what did you do, she asked. Um, I sort of told them that they were Christmas presents. But not this year, Mom, he added quickly. This time, when I go show to show my presents, I'm going to say I got them for Hanukkah. I'm glad, Isaac, his mother answered softly. Mom, stop, Isaac shouted. What is it, she asked, slamming on the brakes. Look. Ahead was a house with a big picture window. Taped to the window was a large picture of a beautiful menorah drawn with many brightly colored crayons. Over the menorah was a message. For our friend Isaac, it read, with love from Teresa and the rest of the Hanley family. Underneath was a picture of a Jewish star and a Christian cross. She didn't tell me she was doing this, Isaac said. She never said anything. Isaac's mom turned toward him, and he saw there were tears in his eyes. You know, honey, hate can make a lot of noise, but love and courage are usually quieter. But in the end, they're also strongest. All the way home, Isaac looked at the menorahs in his neighbor's windows. He thought about what his mom had said, and then he made a decision. Then Brendan put up. The next day was a gray and gloomy day, but in the evening, a warm, inviting light shone from Isaac's bedroom. Gathered around the window were Isaac and all the Hanley children. They had just finished and put up their new holiday direction uh, decorations. Isaac's menorah was perched on the sill. Each branch was brightly lit and shone on the sign, which had been strung across the length of the window. Happy Hanukkah to everyone in Billings, the sign read, with love, Isaac. See what he'd done? And that's the end of our story. What did you think? You want more? <laughs> you wanted to get guys get caught. Yeah, I don't blame you. Well, I'll tell you, when I was... Uh, Looking around this week, I found something for you guys. I found a present for each of you. Huh? And you can see they have menorahs on them. It's chocolate and it has some menorahs. Come on up. Would you like some? There you go. You bet. It's Hanukkah Gelb. That's right. And right now, and this doesn't always happen because. Um, Hanukkah doesn't always fall on Christmas, but this year it does. And this is actually the third day of Hanukkah. And so does anybody else want to take it? I gave you two so you can give one to a friend and to share. And this is a menorah here. And I've asked David uh, to come and help us light this menorah. And there's prayers that are said with it. And so he's going to come and help us uh, to light this and say some prayers with us. And then we'll take this and we'll put this up on our altar. We always light the center one first, which is the attending candle. And from the attending candle, then we light 
the other. And there are only three candles here because this is the third day of Hanukkah. And am I lighting it correctly if I light from inside out? Or is it outside in? Outside in. Outside in. All right. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah light. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our forefathers in those days at this time. Thank you. And I thought I'd put that on the altar for us to remind us that God came into the world because he loved us and invites us to love one another. No, but you might someday. Thank you all. And Merry Christmas. I'm going to invite you to open up your uh, bulletins, and in there is an insert for our service of Holy Communion this evening. The table of bread and wine is before us. It is the table for those who keep company with Jesus and for all those who love him. It is a table where all God's people are made welcome and where there are no distinction between age, race, class, or status. It is a table of sharing and communion for all those who bear the name of Christ. Join with me in the thanksgiving. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, God, Father, and Mother of us all. From the beginning, you made the world and all its creatures. You made people to live for you and for each other. You created Adam and Eve and gave them a garden. You showed Noah a rainbow and gave strength to Moses to free his people and taught Miriam to sing. You gave courage to Esther and loyalty to Ruth. You helped David defeat the giant and gave him a harp to sing with. And yet even they turned away and forgot about you. We also do this. But you did not forget. You sent your only child, Jesus, to the world to show how much you love us and to bring us back to you again. As one of us, Jesus came, at first a tender infant and then a child, a youth and an adult. He rejoiced with those who rejoiced and wept with those who wept. To the sick, Jesus gave healing. And yet Jesus was betrayed and nailed to a cross. Therefore, with all the saints and the angels in heavens, Our hearts beat with happiness, and we sing for joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night before he died, he had supper with his disciples. He took bread, thank you, as we have thanked you broke the bread, and gave the bread to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. After supper, he took the wine, thank you for it, and passed the cup of wine to his friends, saying, This cup is the new promise God has made with you in my blood. Each time you do this and drink from this cup, remember me. Remembering Christ's death and celebrating his resurrection, we await with hope for Christ's coming to bring peace and justice to the earth. We pray, God, 
We pray you, God of love, send your Holy Spirit upon us that we do hear that we and these gifts touched by your Spirit may be signs of life and love to each other and to all the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we lift up our joys and concerns. If you have one to share, you may share it aloud as we continue in time in prayer. now let us pray as Jesus taught us our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen Because there is one loaf, the bread which we break is the breaking of the body of Christ, which is broken for you. The cup which we lift is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ shed for you. We practice an open communion. All those who believe are welcome to come forward and to partake. We'll be doing this by intinction today, taking a piece of the bread and dipping it into the chalice. Once you have received communion, you will also be receiving a candle, and we're gonna invite you, instead of going back to your pews, to form a circle around the sanctuary, and we are going to light our candle, and we're going to sing together, Silent Night, Holy Night, that great German hymn. Will those who are assisting with communion please come and receive now the elements? body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. You want to take a chalice and help and serve it? the bread of heaven. Eat this and be thankful. He's doing bread. And he's doing the chalice and he's doing the bread. There'll be two stations in the back and we're going to ask you to go to the back to receiving to receive the sacrament.
Lord, we're in Christ's name. Please join with me in the prayer after communion. Most loving God, we thank you for giving us Jesus and sharing with us this holy meal. This time together helps us grow as your disciples. Now we go out with you to give ourselves to others. In Jesus' name, amen. As we pass the light of Christ around the room and the lights go dim, join us as we sing Silent Night.
And now as we prepare to go forth back out into the world, may we go forth truly loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, treating everyone with dignity and respect, and sharing that love so that people can see it in thought, word, and deed. Amen. Amen. And as you extinguish your candles, we will sing together joy to the world. Merry Christmas. Thank you all for joining us. And please um, drop off your candles at the exit and as well as receive a special gift from us for Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>